Hey guys, so typically at the end of each month I do a favorites video, but unfortunately this month uh, I didn't have any favorite things. Psych! I have so many favorite things, let's do this! So a few weeks ago a friend of mine hosted a board game night and it was like an amazing night. I didn't I didn't know what to expect. I thought we'd play Risk or Monopoly and we ended up playing like four different board games, all board games I'd never played before. And they were really good. One was Pandemic, another game called Sushi Go that was really fun. We played something called Love Letter and then we also played this really great sort of social lying game called Werewolf and it's all about like deducing who's a werewolf in like your group and like lynching them and if you're the werewolf trying to get the rest of the town to lynch someone else. I know it sounds barbaric, it's amazing. And it's really fun. So it, it inspired me then to go do m research on other board games and something that maybe I could bring uh, a game to one of the parties. And so then I ended up one night, I ended up binging on YouTube video reviews of board games. Uh, and I like stayed up till three in the morning watching and learning about all these different games. And I had so much fun doing it. And I decided to pick one up called uh, Citadels. I went in London. There's a great board game store right around Shaftesbury Avenue called The Orc's Nest. And it's a really fun shop. They just have like loads of different board games. Um, you know, a lot of Warhammer and Dungeons and Dragons stuff. It's really geeky. But uh, no, it's really fun and really cool. And I picked up this one. It's a classic one called Citadels. And this well, I picked this one up because it can play up to eight players. But some even argue that it's two-player uh, mode is amazing as well. So I figured I'd get one because I live with one other person. And so I'd have this game to play with my flatmate and then also potentially bring to the party. I haven't bring it, brought it to the party yet, but I did play it with my flatmate. And it was really, really fun. My flatmate was super smart about the ambiance too. We lit candles. We put on medieval loop music. And it really just fit with the whole theme of the game. So yeah, Citadels. I guess I guess I should tell you a little bit about what it's about. Basically, it's like I describe it as like Monopoly meets Magic the Gathering. And basically, you're trying to build you're trying to build the best citadel ever. So you have to build different things. You can build like a castle with this card, or like a trading post, or a market. These are some of the boring ones, but there's some really cool ones like. A town hall, that's kind of cool. Or a tavern, yeah. And then, but no, there's some like, there's like a magic school in one of them. And yeah, there's just really cool, the docks you can build, the palace. And, but the complicated part of it is that you also, each round, so each round you get an opportunity to build stuff. But, um, each round, you also have to pick who you want to play as. You can play as the bishop or the architect or uh, the king. And then there's one character called the assassin and then that guy can actually kill another player. And it gets really tactical and it's really fun. And I, it sounds kind of complicated, but it's one. It's a game you can pick up really quickly. And so, yeah. So one of my favorites this month is just board games in general. And then more specifically, if you're looking for a good one, Citadels is good as well. And then just to mention another one I just picked up the other day, which I played at my friend James's house, and that is Love Letter. It's originally a game that was invented in Japan where it's supposedly become a massive sensation. Uh, this is the Batman themed edition they had at work, so I figured I'd pick it up for 50% off. And it's really fun too, and it's really quick and fast and even more casual than uh, Citadels. So that's another great one. So yeah. Go board games. Next thing I'd like to recommend is a really great TV show. I've almost finished it. There's only one season. It came out, I think, in December. It's called uh, London Spy, and it stars Ben Winshaw. And it's just a really well done spy slash love story set in London. And like the first episode is just this eerie, quiet, romantic, quiet uh, episode that just tracks the romance between. Uh, Ben Winshaw's character and this other guy who's like this super smart economics dude and then at the end of the episode you know uh things things change something is revealed about Ben Winshaw's lover and that leads to whole a whole sort of different you know spy related events 
and it's really well done. I don't even want to say, because it's such a short season, I don't really want to say anything more about it, but I really enjoyed that one. So if you can find it online, give it a go. My third favorite thing is the film The Revenant. And I've seen a lot of the Oscar movies now, and I really enjoyed them. I enjoyed Spotlight, I enjoyed Big Short. The Revenant, however, I thought was really, really good. And the difference between The Revenant and those other films, which I enjoyed, is that while even, all three are adaptations of books, I feel like The Revenant, you know, you could watch that movie and and think maybe it wasn't based on a book. and Because it's just such a film that, you know, delivers visual, you know, cinematic splendor. And which is a weird word to use because it's not a wondrous movie. It's a dark, eerie, bleak film. But the camera work and the direction, it's the same guy who did Birdman. It has this fluidity that you're like sort of trapped in scenes that are both majestic and dark and violent and horrible. And it, oh, it, it was so good. And so I would say it's my choice to win the best picture, though I do think it's a film with flaws. I honestly believe it could have been 45 minutes shorter. Uh, there's these arty farty bits throughout the whole thing where he's like having these hallucinations. And honestly, they could have been cut and the movie would have been fine. Um, but even with them, the scenes that were really good were so good that they carried those sort of lackluster scenes with them. Uh, yeah, so I highly recommend it. And maybe Leo will get the Oscar for this one this year. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> um, so yeah, those are my favorite things this month. Guys, let me know if you've seen or played any of these board games or have any recommendations of shows or things you think I should do. Uh, please let me know. Uh, if you like this video, please like it. And if you really like this video, please subscribe. And until next time, happy reading, happy board game playing, happy movie watching, happy TV watching, happy fun having. Okay, I think that's it. That's all. Did I miss anything? <laughs>